Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and welcome to Learn Pearl by Doing. This is the first in a series of videos on learning Pearl and the idea is that in every video I'm going to try to show you something useful that you can do with the Pearl programming language and I'm going to kind of assume that you're familiar with the basics of computer programming and if you're not you might want to check out my free Java for Beginners, for example, programming course on www.caveofprogramming.com. But I'm going to assume that you're familiar with basic programming concepts in some language or other, like creating loops and if statements and things like this. And we're going to see how to do that in Perl. And in every video, I'll try to think of something that you might want to do with a Perl script and I'm going to show you how to do it and I'll explain as much as I can within that video without it getting too long about how the Perl script actually works and how you can put uh, one like this together yourself and adapt it for your own purposes. Now in this particular video I'm going to show you some options for installing Perl on your system and I'm going to assume that if you're using Linux or Unix that either you or your system administrator probably already knows or has installed Perl. And if you're using Mac, then at least one of the options that I'm about to show you will be applicable to you. But this video, I'm, in this video, I'm really going to concentrate on Windows users because um, Windows users often um, just want things to work. And I, I use Windows myself and we don't like to get involved with really complicated installs. So for that reason, I'm going to show you some really good, fairly simple options for getting Perl working on Windows in this particular video. So let's go to a browser here and you can run Perl directly on Windows. Perl is cross-platform. It will run on pretty much any reasonable platform. And one good option for running Perl on Windows is Active Perl. And all the stuff I'm going to show you here is completely free. So if you search for Active Perl, you see this link from Active State. And there's uh, this download Active Perl link to the free community edition. And even though it's a free community edition, this is a very, very powerful Perl system. So if you, you, if you install this, you'll be able to follow all of the tutorials that I'm going to go through. And indeed, I'm going to use this extensively in these tutorials. So that's one good option and that just installs like a normal install program. If you uh, want another choice you could use uh, Strawberry Pearl. If you search for Strawberry Pearl this is just another really good Perl installation for Windows and uh, there's a boast here from Larry Wall who I believe is the creator of Perl and he says when I'm on Windows I use Strawberry Pearl so it must be pretty good. And I've installed that before, and as far as I remember, once again, this is just a normal Windows install, so it's, uh, it's pretty straightforward. I'm also going to be using, in these tutorials, Sigwin. If you search for Sigwin, that's C-Y-G-W-I-N, this kind of emulates a Unix or Linux type system on Windows. And it's again, it's pretty simple to install. You just download the setup.exe and run it. And you may need um, either join the setup or you can run setup.exe again after you've installed it. There's no harm in that. And you may need to um, just specify that you want to install Perl. And you'll see how to do that. It's, it is pretty simple. Uh, Sigwin allows you to install a massive load of different things. And you don't want to install all of them because it would be gigabytes and gigabytes. But just run the default setup. And if you find that you don't have Perl installed, just run it again and browse to Perl and right click and set it to install um, the second time round. And this is actually Sigwin here. And if you type, uh, for example, Perl hyphen V here in a Sigwin terminal, you'll get stuff about the Perl version. Now, let's say you've installed Active Perl or Strawberry Perl. One thing that might catch you out is you might not have Perl in your path. And I'm going to talk about editors just in a minute um, as well. But first, um, one thing you'll probably often want to do in Windows is to run Perl from the command line. And to do that, if you go to your start menu, I'm in Windows 7 here, and uh, I don't have Windows 8, but I assume that Windows 8 is going to have something similar. 
and you type command cmd you get this command.exe and if you click on that you want to be able to set up your system so that you can type Perl from anywhere in Windows and it runs Perl. And if you just run Perl by itself like this, it just kind of hangs waiting for input. Let's do Control C to stop that and type Perl hyphen V. And again, we've got a message about the Perl version here, just like in Sigwin and just like you would in Linux or Unix. Now, to, to make this work, to make Perl accessible from anywhere, it has to be in your path environment variable. So to do that, to make sure of that, in Windows, I'd search for Perl.exe, like this, which is the Perl command interpreter. And I'd right click and go to Properties, and then just copy, just select, right click and copy the directory that Perl is actually installed in. This is the location of Perl.exe. Then I go to the Start menu and my Control Panel. Now I always have trouble remembering this, but I think it's System and Security. And is that right? System and Security. Uh, let's go back again because maybe I'm wrong. I think that's right. And we want some kind of advanced settings here. Maybe System. That's it. System. System and Security System. Advanced System Settings, Environment Variables, and then scroll down in here and look for a variable called Path, and select Path. If you don't find it, then click New and add it, but it's almost certain to be there. And when you've selected Path, click Edit. In this box here, click in it, um, press the End button to go right to the end, then type a semicolon and paste in with Control v the path that you copied and click OK. And that will add Perl to the list of locations that your command prompt will look in when it's uh, looking for a right program to run a particular command. So I'm going to cancel that because I've already done that. And if you do that and then you restart your command prompt by, you could go to the Start menu again and go to Command again and then type Perl hyphen V, you should see this message. So that's installing Perl, and whichever option you choose, it should be pretty straightforward. Sometimes you'll want to add extra functionality to Perl, which uh, is done via a package system. And like you can install packages in Perl, which will allow you to add extra functionality for Perl. They're basically kind of Perl libraries. And uh, you might want to just Google that. Like, so if you're in Linux, you, you might want to Google installing Perl package Linux or whatever and maybe your particular version of Linux. But so if you're running Active Perl, go to the Start menu and type Perl, well, type Perl, and then go to this Perl Package Manager. And all you have to do to install a new package, and we'll be looking at examples of packages as we go along, is wait for this to load, and it can take a while sometimes, uh, so you have to be patient. Type the name of the package you want to install, you might have to change one of these options here to switch from viewing your install packages to viewing packages that you can install. And then select the package. And uh, I think you right click to say that you want to install it and then click one of these buttons here to, uh, to actually install the package and run it. Oh, here we go. So let's say that I want to search for a new package to install. Then I would click this, view up upgradable packages. Actually, um, I think that's right. Let's try that. And uh, I'd, I'd find the package in here that I want to install. Let's say I want to install a package called AWP, LWP, which we will look at in these tutorials. And I right click and go to install. And in, in this case, install LWP media types. And just click this button to run marked actions. So I won't do that now because I don't need this. But you can see that installing extra functionality in Perl is also pretty straightforward. Now, one last thing is in this for this tutorial, I want to talk about editors a little bit. And I'm going to be using a variety of editors. And you can use whichever one you like the most. So in, um, in Sigwin, if you're really crazy, you could install Vi or something like that. I don't think I've got it installed. Um, you could use some kind of like editor in there. Or you could install, um, for example, Notepad++. 
in Windows. If you search for Notepad++, this is a very basic but very, very nice um, programming editor that will let you create um, Perl files, which at the end of the day are just text files. Uh, so I can highly recommend Notepad++. And you might also want to think about using Eclipse, and that's probably the nicest uh, editor that I've actually seen for Perl. If you search for Eclipse and go to eclipse.org, go to Downloads and search... There's no harm in installing a Java IDE for Eclipse if you want to, or you could uh, install Eclipse Classic or something like that. And then search for Eclipse Perl plugin, and you'll find this epic Eclipse Perl integration. Go to download and just follow the instructions here. And basically, it, this involves going to Eclipse. You can read what this says here for yourself. It's very, very simple. Uh, you go to Eclipse and you find the install new software link, paste in the URL that they tell you to paste in, click add, and then just follow the instructions. And you'll end up with with um, Perl being cap with uh, your Eclipse installation, your Eclipse editor, which is a very, very powerful editor, being capable of running Perl. And I'm going to be showing you in these tutorials examples of using Eclipse, which we'll probably use a lot alongside other editors. So that's it for this time. I hope you've um, you've got some good ideas about how best to proceed with installing Perl. And in the next tutorial, we're going to move on to looking at an example of actually creating and running a Perl program. So that's it for this time. And until next time, happy coding. <laughs>